Alrighty, there we go. Alright, let's get this working. Here's our hands free. I hope you guys can see me because I am not using my hands. Hopefully that works. Hopefully that works. Alright. There we go. Alright, now, because I am driving and I'm using hands-free, I got my phone on my dash in a bag. <laughs> so, hands-free, see? So I won't be able to see your uh, text messages to me because I'm driving. You don't want to periscope and drive or text message and drive. All right, so on my Facebook page, um, my call sign I are on my Facebook page. Someone wrote in on my last scope video what to bring as a new player. What do I bring as far as ammo and gear and just everything? What do I need to go to an op? Um, well, they actually said just what do I need to bring as a new player? So there's... there's off the top of my head, two things. Uh, there's the big ops, which are one or two days, and then there's just your walk-on days, right? Um, and walk-on days could be indoor fields and outdoor fields. Um, and then there's personal preference. So there's actually four things I'm gonna kinda go over. Um, as a new player, I always tell people, don't worry about, um, don't worry about the gear. Just get yourself a, a reliable airsoft replica not gun, I'm trying not to use the word gun. Get yourself a reliable airsoft replica that won't break down on you, that won't break your bank account either. Um, and there's plenty out there, and everyone has their own opinion about what's the best starter gun. Um, so I'm not going to touch on that because it's just a giant battle, um, giant debate. Oh, don't fall. Um, so get yourself a reliable not too inexpensive, not a cheap gun, but something that's not going to break the bank, but something that's not going to fall apart on you. That's first and foremost. Get yourself a good set of eye pro, ear pro, and face. Or just wrap it all up in one with a, some type of mask or paintball mask. Don't worry about the gear. Don't worry about the plate carrier or the vest. Don't worry about the H harness. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just get something that you can actually just throw BBs down downfield. Um, so that takes care of the basic question. What should, what should I get to start off? That's it. Just get yourself a gun and a safety stuff. That's it. Now, for indoor field, because they're always hot indoors, even if it's an outdoor hot day, you can still wear all the crap. But if it's an indoor field, don't get a lot of gear. Don't wear a lot of gear. Like, when I go, I have a battle belt that carries two M4 mags, two pistol mags, and a pistol on it, and then I just sling an AEG. And that's it. I don't have all my gear, I mean, I have played with all my gear on, and it just sucks, it's just too hot, and indoor airsoft is like, um, it's like speedball, paintball, you just want to be fast, and quick, and nimble, and mobile, without having a lot of stuff weighing you down, because it's basically, um, speed soft, it's like, it's just like, uh, like, a speedball, paintball, right, so, you want to be light and nimble without a bunch of gear on. Um, so get something, I mean, for a new player, you can just go out there in your jeans, your t-shirt, uh, with your rifle. You don't even need a pistol. Why? Why bother? Um, nine times out of ten, you're going to get in about a ten-second fight, and you're either going to win or you're going to lose. If you win, you move on to your next target. If you lose, you're, you're walking back to the dead box anyways. It doesn't matter. Nine times out of ten, you will never need your pistol unless you just run a pistol only. There's another option you can do for indoor field. Um, but if, um, like when I go out, I don't wear my full kit. I'll just wear an H harness that holds, what, four mags in the front of me, and that's it. I'll run an AEG. So the battery's in the gun. I don't have to have, the, like, the HPA tank with my uh, M27 on. I have the tank, the hose, and the heavy gun. I don't have to wear a backpack with the AEG. I just run the H harness and the four mags, and that's it. If I feel like running my battle belt with the pistol, I can do that uh, instead. So I have my two mags, my two M4 mags on the side, my two pistol mags. I have my pistol for backup, and then my AEG up top. Uh, and then I got a couple Thunder Thunder Bees on there too, which is really for indoor fields. It's more like just for distraction. It doesn't count as a kill, but it still it's loud and it does distract people. So it does help. There's an advantage to having a Thunder Bee on you. Um, but again, indoor, just go lightweight. 
don't worry about gear. For outdoor, you can run the same thing as you run an indoor. Simple. Go cheap. You don't need to buy all the kit. You don't need to buy all the gear. But if you have all the gear, wear the plate carry if you like having all your stuff on there. Uh, if you run an HPA like I do, throw it into a hydration pack. You don't need to have the full plate carrier with, with your bottle on the back. I just happen to have mine already rigged up like that. So when I play outdoor, I'll play with my HPA system. It has my plate carrier with the bottle on the back, the air bottle on the back, and then I'll run my, my V12. Um, so that's just for walk-ons. Uh, and for both cases, ammo-wise, just bring, like I run only mid-caps, so 140 BBs each. That's all you really need, because by the time the game, you have, what, 15-minute game, if there's still players on both sides, but a lot of the times, one side will sweep the other side, and that'll be it, and you have a 5-10 minute game, and you won't even go through two mags. If you're going through all five mags in one set, you're shooting too much, unless, no, there's no way, you're still, you're still shooting too much. Um, you don't need to go full auto, you know, you shouldn't be burning that many burning through that many mags on, on a walk-on, just one set of walk-on games. Um, I know uh, Tax City, the walk-on uh, walk games you do are four sets, which is two games, I guess you can call it. You walk out, switch sides twice, so you're playing four sets. So a mag per set works for me. I don't shoot a lot. Some people like more. Some people like running high caps. You can take two high caps and just keep winding them up. Um, or the flash mag, just keep zipping them. You, 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 what do you have, like 250 in a high cap? So people run that. So you don't have to carry a lot of mags. You just carry two of those, you're good to go. Now, the question was, I think, really towards the three-day op, two-day op type things. How much do you carry? Well, you know, if you're going to a three-day op, you're not going as a beginner. You've been playing for a while and you want to go to a big, big game. But let's say a big game is one of your first or you've only played a few times awesome, great that you're going on to a Millsum game, that's, that's fantastic, and you don't know how much you shoot, well, personally, well, first of all, let's go by the rules, what the hell is that, for, for, I got bit by something, son of a bitch, um, personally, um, not personally, uh, by the rules, a lot of the, the ops, they only allow you to have mid caps, so you're limited to um, uh, the mid caps that are 120, 140 rounds, whatever they are. And there's also uh, class sets as well. So almost everybody's a rifleman, and you're only allowed a certain amount of mags as a rifleman. I know Lion Claws, I think you're limited to six mid caps. I believe it's six mid caps. Uh, American Milsom games, you're limited as well to six or eight. Uh, you gotta look on the rules. I can't think of them off, off the top of my head. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, but you're limited on how many mags you can carry, and they have to be big caps. Um, I believe Mills, American Milsom games, you cannot load on the field. Um, you can only load at the respawn point. Like if you get hit uh, and you're dead and you're waiting to be medic because you have a five minute bleed out, which means you get hit, you call yourself hit, you sit down, and then. You can, you, know, you can wave and say, medic, 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 and wait for a medic to come over. They wrap a bandage around your arm, and you're back in the fight. If you bleed out and within five minutes, you have to walk back to your nearest uh, your nearest spawn, or uh, I don't know what they call them. I forgot what they refer to them as. Um, but uh, it's a barrel with a flag in it. Um, and you can reload there. Lion Claws game, I believe there's no rule on reloading. You can reload on the field, um, no matter where you're at, whether you're hit or not. Um, and they also have medic rules there too. Uh, Milson West games. I haven't been to a Milson West game. I believe I'm supposed to go out to the next one in George Air Force Base, which is, I believe, at the end of this month. Wow. I better get my butt in gear, get my gear together. Um, I don't know what the reload rules on that are. If uh, you can do it anywhere, if you've got to do it back to your spawn point, if they have medic rules, I don't know. I haven't looked into any of that. And I'm supposed to go to a game, so I'm kind of lagging on that. I need to get my my act together on that um so how much ammo to carry to an op well well you know how much you can carry on your mid caps you're only allowed a certain amount of mid caps you can load those full up but what do you carry with you on the field as opposed to extra extra bbs or even green gas um i know i carry when i go to ops i have my hydro and then my bottle sits on my back but i also have carried um 
uh, like a small ruck or something, uh, and other people would throw stuff in there. Actually, my map, I switched out my map, sorry. My map pack on the back has enough room for an extra bag of BBs uh, that I've carried for other people, but I don't carry any extra stuff for me in my map because I can't reach it. I'd have to take off my entire play carry. Uh, I limit myself to four mags, I'm sorry, three mags on the chest, four on the drop, um, on a, on a drop rig on my thigh. So I'll have four mags there. So I have three, four, that's seven. And one in the gun, that's eight. I think that's what the limit is, is eight. Um, and then I'll carry two KWA speed loaders that fit in the last two slots of my drop leg. So I can load up maybe three mags on that. Um, I figure if I've run out of all my mags and I got to reload three mags, and I'm still running out of ammo. A, something went horribly wrong in the firefight that I'm in. B, I still have my pistol with three mags. But if I'm down to my pistol and no AR mags, yeah, something went terribly, terribly wrong. And if I have no one else there to give me their last mag, or I have no one else there to get more BBs out of the back, or I'm not able to share with anybody or whatever, it's in dire straits. Something went horribly wrong. So at that point, I'm, I pretty much know I'm taking a walk. And, and you know, if I can't contest the area, just hold out for reinforcements. Um, but again, in, in ops like that, you're not looking to hose people down. You're looking to contest areas and hold space. Uh, and that's what the biggest problem with new players at ops are. They don't understand. They think it's like a walk on. We just rush, 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 clack, 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 and hopefully you get as many kills as possible. That's not what a, a mill sub game is about. Um, so... Uh, that's what I carry personally. Um, I don't carry any extra green, green gas for myself. My mags don't leak for my pistol, so I'm good on that. But that's for me personally. I know when I get my V12 put in my saw, I'll be running a different plate carrier, and I'll have two pouches on either side with either A, two box mags, or B, two bags of BBs, or maybe four, but whatever, how many BBs I can hold on each one, depending on what the limit is on what I can carry on the field per the game rules. So I know I can carry two extra box mags because they only fill up to, I think the box mags carry 500 rounds each, um, but I think you're limited to like something like 2,000 rounds, which is, I think, one bag of BBs or something, or a bottle or something, but um, at any rate, you're limited, even as a saw gunner, how much you can carry. So in that case, you know, I'll just fill up whatever I can fill up on the side, and then I'll run my saw there, but I'll, I'll swap out my plate here that I currently have and run my ammo PC with a small sc uh, scuba tank or a large um, paintball tank. I'm going to move over. All right. Um, so that's going to be a whole nother, uh, a whole nother kit. But again, I'm going to be able to carry what I can what I'm allowed to carry, and it's going to be accessible to me personally, because honestly, when the S hits the fan, and there's no, no one around to help you reload or grab something off your back, you're basically SOL, right? Um, so think of it that way. Um, load up as much as you can per the rule set, but also make it so you're not just throwing it on your back and like, oh no, I'm out in the middle of nowhere, and everyone died around me, and now how do I get my stuff without taking all my gear off? Because I guarantee you're going to be a be in the middle of a firefight and you're going to have to reload and there's nobody going to be around to help you because they're dealing either A, with their own targets or B, you're going to be alone. So, that's what I would carry ammo-wise. Um, whatever you're allowed to, buy the rule set and then whatever you know you shoot normally, that's what I would carry because to be honest, load up as much as you possibly can. It doesn't matter. Um, max out whatever you can max out per the rule set. That's for ops. For walk-ons, for walk-ons, if you like high caps, run high caps. Run two high caps and you're done. Um, indoor or outdoor, it doesn't matter. Just run high caps. Um, I personally don't like high caps. I like running mids. Um, I like running mids so much, I like my ERG, my KWA PTS ERG, because the mags you can set to 30 or 60 rounds. 30 or 60 rounds, you can set it. And me being an idiot, I like running 30 rounds just to make myself miserable <laughs> because I like being operator. No, I, just, I like the challenge because the ERG not only has the recoil, but it also has a tongue in the mag that will stop the gun from shooting on the last BB and it will load every last BB. You take a AEG mag out, a high cap or a mid, you drop the mag, everyone knows two or three BBs will fall out because it won't load that extra space. 
Um, but I love my ARG because that tongue just pushes that last BB up. So I'll run, I'll run 30s. Um, and I'll run the full set, you know, three in a chest, four in the leg. For a walk on, I'll run three on the chest. Done. Or I'll set them to 60, run three on the chest, you know, whatever. Um, but again, it's all about what makes the game fun for you. That's really what it's about. What makes the gun fun for you? Um, what makes the gun, what makes the game gun for you? What makes the game fun for you? Jesus. Um, now, as for gear, I kind of touched this at, touched on this at the beginning. There's no reason why you need to get fully kitted out in the, in the most expensive kit possible. It's dumb. I know there's people out there who like to run cries and run the legit whatever, you know, the, whatever, whatever Marsocks running, whatever seals are running, whatever blah, blah, blah is running. It's BS. I touched on this on my last one. I, I know I've sat down with seals for a three day op or, uh, you know, I crashed out of their house going to another game the next day, uh, you know, on a layover and I sit there and chat with them. And yes, some of them do airsoft. Some of them do paintball. Some of them do both. And they'll tell you the kit changes from operation to operation 80, 90% of the time. Do they match their gear? Uh, multi-cam plate carrier? Hell no. They have a tan plate carrier. They know they're going to an arid area. They're running a tan plate carrier. They'll take their multi-cam pouches, throw it on there. Oh, they're missing their you know, they're missing their IFAC. Well, their IFAC is, is Ranger Green or OD Green or whatever. Throw that on there. They don't care. They throw on whatever gets the job done. Um, and that's what I do. I have one of my, I have my LBX that I'm running in Project Honor and my pouches on there are tan. My map is tan. My air tank pouch that I keep my bottle in that's multicam because guess what? I ran multicam when I played paintball and I ran my tank on my back with a remote line. Um, some of my pouches are multicam and OD green. My admin pouch that keeps my eggs in, those are OD. I don't care. I don't match stuff, but that's me. I'm not, I'm not anal about that. I'm not, I'm not a diva about how, how it looks. And I'm not saying if you like everything to match your, your anal about it or you're being a diva, you like you like it to look a certain way by all means do it just don't break the bank trying to match everything up it's that's dumb that's retarded you find something on clearance that's uh that's tan and you and you run a, a green plate carrier or whatever who cares that but that's me because oh what about what about the op rules you have to if you're on green you can't run 10 no, 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 no. the only thing for ops if you're on green side let's say you have to have a green lid something on your head that's green if you have something on your head you can't wear a tan bump helmet and be on green team because when you pop up over a cover and a tan guy sees a tan helmet he's not going to shoot you thinking oh he's my guy and you go and shoot him it's not going to be fair right um although in the real world if they're shooting at you shoot back but whatever um but yeah so you know the rules apply when it comes to um just your your pants your shirt and your lid. So green, uh, green bump helmet. If you wear a bump helmet, green baseball cap. If you run a cap, green combat shirt or whatever. That's app applicable. Whatever that word is. And then the trousers. Everything. And then everything else. Your plate. If you run a plate carrier or a vest or whatever, that can be tan. They don't care. Um, lucky for me, my project honor can either go either way. It, it looks tan when I wear all tan. It looks green when I wear all green. That's kind of why I like project honor. Um, plus. It's not a real camouflage. The military doesn't use it. And I'm not. I'm not trying to be a, a LARP softer. I'm not trying to LARPerate. You know, I just. I just like to go out and have fun. Um, and that's the point: is to go out and have fun and not break yourself and not break your piggy bank um, and not go into debt playing something that's supposed to be fun. That's going to make you miserable when you look at your bank account the next day. So, um, when it comes to your kit or at least your your gear. Um, Go with whatever your budget can go with and go with whatever you can possibly like to run. I mean, it's up to you really, but I wouldn't go out and kill yourself over making yourself look like a SEAL or an operator of any kind. Um, it's just nonsense. 
you know, um, what else, what else, what, because I can't see if anyone's typing, so, all right, so what to bring for ammo, bring whatever you can bring per the, the ops rules, if it's a walk-on game, bring high caps, if, if you're a new player, because you're, you're gonna forget that you're blank, you're dry firing when you run out on a mid cap, I've seen a hundred times, um, I see it all the time, uh, they'll run mid caps and they're just doing nothing but firing, nothing, right, um, bring a high cap, you know, we don't have to worry about reloading, or that much, you have to keep winding them and whatnot, but at least you don't have to worry about mag swapping, right, it, it brings it down to the bare minimum for the game of just playing the game to pull the trigger, which is what the base core is, right, <laughs> is having fun, trying to eliminate the other person, um, uh, kit wise, don't break the budget. Wear whatever you can wear. If you're going to an op, wear whatever you're supposed to wear, um, and try to cut corners wherever you can to make it a little more inexpensive for you. Because if you're going to an op, you're already play, paying for a plane ticket, rental car, hotel, food, and gas. What else? And if you're like me, booze. <laughs> I don't drink all that a lot, but I do like to have a cocktail after the game. Um, so make it. it no matter what, make it as inexpensive as possible because the whole idea is to have fun. Um, speaking of which, one thing I do see a lot of, whether I go to big ops or even walk-on days when it's hot out, people are drinking energy drinks. Knock that crap off. Drink water. Energy drinks are just like soda. It's got sugar in it. Sugar's going to dehydrate you. You're not going to get any hydration out of it. You may think since it's ice cold, it's good for you, it's going to be a great use. It's not. You need to drink water. And not only do you need, need to drink water throughout the day, but you need to drink water um, about three to five days before, especially for a big op. Uh, your body needs to be hydrated. Personally, I drink, um, I drink these. About this much water, I drink about four of these a day, minimum. Um, but I also try to work out every day too. I've been kind of lagging. Usually I work out every day, but I, lately I've been lagging. My back's been killing me. Um, I got some issues going on with my back. I don't know what the hell's going on. But, um, so I've been kind of lagging on the gym, but I still drink as much water as I can to constantly stay hydrated. Um, what else to bring? If you're going to ops, don't cheap, don't cheap out on um, bringing uh, a hydro pack with you. Um, on the back of your plate carrier or vest, figure if some vests you can't put a hydration pack, figure it out. You need to have some type of hydration on you because when you're out there walking around, the sun's beating down, you think you're fine, you get into a firefight, and all of a sudden you're thirsty, and you try to muscle through being thirsty, you're going to dehydrate, you're going to cramp. Up. Um, so hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. On the big ops, make sure, at least on the big ops, make sure you have a hydration pack. It doesn't have to be camel pack doesn't have to be max penalty, just something. Because bringing bottles of water out there, it's not gonna work because of the way you have all your gear, because you're just not gonna have enough pouches. That's basically what's gonna happen. And at least with a map pack, you can put your hydration in there, or even a hydration pack, you can put that in there, you can put some extra whatever you want, cliff bars, that brings me to the next point. So hydration. Next point is food. Um, don't eat greasy food the morning of, um, I see people, maybe some people can handle it, I personally can't, you can't have, you know, eggs, bacon, hash browns, and then go try to hump it for freaking eight hours, um, you're gonna get sick, at least I've seen it before, um, you're gonna want to eat the night before really healthy, really well, a lot of protein, a lot of carbs, um, which means breads, uh, give you that energy, especially the morning of. Um, have something with bread, you know, a sandwich. Not too heavy. Don't put a lot of mayo in it. Just, you know, some meats, some proteins, um, and some bread so for, so for carbohydrate. Carbohydrates will give you the energy throughout the day. They'll give you longer energy. Um, throughout the day, I like Cliff Bars. Um, not, not necessarily the brand. I mean, I like Cliff Bars personally, but... Um, I don't really care for like the granola, uh, like the Quaker Oats granola with the chocolate chip. They're too small, they won't give you enough, I don't think, energy, but at least those are oats and that'll give you energy as well. But the Cliff Bars, I like, and I'm sure there's, 
half a dozen to more uh, types of cliff bar type um, uh, bars you can eat. I know a lot of people like bringing MREs out to these things. They're, they're designed so, you, so when you eat them, they give you energy. They're also designed so you are constipated so you don't have to take a dump, which is always good because I always hate going on to these ops and having to take a, a crap in one of those porta potties. That sucks because by the second day, you're sitting on top of a pyramid, and that's just horrible. Um, but you know, I like you know, I like to see people out there with MREs. I don't know. They, I mean, I don't like seeing them out there with. MREs. What I mean to say is, it's cool seeing people out there with MREs because it's kind of like, oh, you're playing Milsim and you're eating MREs. That's kind of cool. Um, but that's that's them. Um, they also, if you go to any type of like survivalist store or any type of um, camping store or surplus store, you can get MREs there. You can get um, other type of, uh, oh, like, uh, what are they called? Like the disaster uh, preparation kits. That food is actually really good. Those, all you have to do is either add hot water or just regular water, and it heats up automatically, or you add water, and then you break a pouch around it or something, it heats it up. There's another way. So there's another way to eat something other than MREs that gives you good food, good energy, um, but again, MREs and and those survival kits are expensive. Um, but again, you're not eating that every day, so what the hell? Go ahead and buy them. There's, there's no there's no problem spending a little extra money on that. Um, what other kit do I carry on me? Um, my IFAC. Uh, when you play ops, they always tell you you have to have at least two bandages for the medic rule, um, and that's your that's your um, game IFAC. Uh, but I always carry a real IFAC with me and a tourniquet, uh, and it's always in the same place on my plate carrier, um, and it's always on my left side, just behind my my rib cage. And I'm, I can unclip it, the strap that goes around, and then I can just tear it off. It has a handle. This Velcro is this is the plate of Velcro with the pouch with the Velcro. On it. I just tear it off, and I have used that on walk-on days at SC Village multiple times. I have used it at ops. Actually, broken home. Kid sliced his hand open. Um, not too bad, but enough to where. And it was a long walk. Like we were out on the opposite end of the campsite where the actual EMT was, and it's a long hike. So, and it was. It didn't hit a vein or anything. It wasn't on his wrist, but it was just at the base of his palm, and it was enough that it was bleeding a lot. So. Um, I, you know, I, I ran over there. I saw it happen. I ran over there because I knew because he, he started daffy ducking down this road, and it was full of shake. And I knew his hand hit that um, hit hit those rocks hard. His gun went flying. His shit went everywhere. And I knew he, he I knew he tore something up. So I went over there, and sure enough, he got a good I don't know about a two inch gash on his hand. So ripped off my IFAC, opened it up, put my gloves. Oh, did I wear gloves? No, I didn't wear, I should have wore gloves. Always, if you're going to carry an IFAC to help people, always wear your gloves. And I had gloves in there, I didn't do it. Um, and I should have because it wasn't an emergency where he would have bled out or anything. It was um, It was just it was a small cut. I should have just done it just for my own personal safety. And obviously for his. Because um, he doesn't know what I carry. I don't carry anything. But I don't know what he carries. You know, he you know, he could have had something. Um, who knows? But if you, if you are going to be some type of first responder or some type of pre-med, pre-medical, whatever, before the EMT emergency people are there, um, wear, wear those rubber latex gloves just for your own safety. Um, but so, you know, I ripped that off, opened up, washed it out, cleaned it out, um, threw the back team crap on there, uh, threw some gauze, wrapped them up, sent them on his way. Uh, Ten minutes of downtime. He was on the opposite team. I don't care. The guy was hurt. Um, that's my first priority is everyone having fun no one gets hurt that's, but that's me I don't care about anything else um, so I do carry a real IFAC and a tourniquet God forbid someone freaking rips something open and they're bleeding out um, there's, a, there's enough people with radios that can reach the EMT uh, on site a lot of these I think by, by the insurance policy they have to have emergency people on site I know uh, Lion Claws they do, and I know American Milson does. I don't know if Milson West does. I apologize, Josh, if you're watching. Uh, I, I, I've been to one of your games yet, so I don't know. Um, 
So, yes, I carry one of those at all times. So the ammo, the gear, that's part of the gear. Hydro, um, something to eat throughout the day. Um, those are a must. Anything else that are a must? I mean, no. I mean, obviously your iPro. A lot of these three-day ops, they only require you to have iPro, which is full seal around the eyes. Uh, I personally have my iron mesh. It's breathable. I can breathe through it. It's this, it's this mesh, right? I have that... Um, I cut everything off of it, so I just have the mesh, and then I bungee it to the clips on the side of my bump helmet. Now, why do I wear a bump helmet? It look cool? No, I actually wear it because I have my uh, my uh, NVG mount, and then I mount my uh, replay XD camera on my NVG mount, so it sticks down like this, so I got a first-person view. I just don't have time to edit video. <laughs> That's why you never see video from me. Um, but I always have that there, so I run my bump helmet. Anyways. So I attach my mesh there. Another reason why I like doing that, where I just clip it on one side, clip it on there, I can just release one side, drop it down. Because when you're at an op, you're doing a lot of walking, and you're doing 20 seconds to 20 minutes of a firefight. So in between firefights, I like taking it off, wrapping it over top of the head, and reclipping it. Now it's out of the way. Problem solved. Now I have breathability. Uh, my Ear Pro um, are the, what do I wear, the Hewlett Packard, I think they're Hewlett Packard. No, they're Protec. Protec? No, not Protec. Peltor. Sorry, guys. Peltor. They're the Peltor noise cancellations. Um, do I wear those all? I know I should in case I get hit in the ear. Um, I used to wear them all the time. Oh, okay. So for outdoor walk-ons, like I, when I went to SC Village, they require you by insurance purposes to wear face, which covers the nose and mouth, ear pro, which covers the entire ear, and then, of course, eye pro. So I'd have to wear my ear pro, my mesh, and then my eye pro. Um, and I decided to get the noise cancellation. That way I can still hear everything. And then um, it'll cancel out the thunder bees when they get tossed inside of a uh, container because those iron containers and the thunder bee goes off. They're already loud enough. You get a thunder bee in there and it's it's really loud. It'll, uh, it'll ring your ears for a while. Whoops, I just passed this guy and I gotta get off right here. Woo. Sorry. Um, so, wait, is this my exit? I don't even know where I live. Yeah, I'm right at the right spot. Um, so, the Peltors, the noise cancellation. I don't wear those at ops because they're not necessary by, by insurance purposes. And to be honest, when a Thunderbeat goes off next to me, it, it doesn't phase me anymore. But as a new player, don't get the noise cancellation ones if you're not really afraid of Thunderbees. Um, just get the normal shotgun ones. Um, get the thin ones if you wear a bump helmet so they fit under the bump or fast, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then get the regular ones. If you're, if you're not afraid of the Thunderbees, um, then you can, what you can do with the shotgun ones, since there's no electronics, it's just a shell and the foam. You can drill holes in the outside with a drill, small, small bit. Don't make the big, don't make a big hole because the BBs can actually go through there and defeats the purpose. Just get the regular shotgun ones, wear those. If you're not afraid of Thunderbees and you want to be able to hear more, uh, take a small bit with a drill or a Dremel and just punch a bunch of holes in it then it's like having like mesh ear pro and the BBs won't go through it and you'll be perfectly fine um, if you do wear a bump I know Valken I don't know if any other company makes them but I know Valken is making a mesh ear pro that actually attaches to the chin strap of your bump so your mesh sits right over your ear on both sides so that's pretty cool you can always do that too if you wear a bump I don't know if they can attach a baseball hat or not I doubt it um, so for, for kit wise, again, wear what you're supposed to wear. Make sure your eye seal are not just regular sunglasses. Make sure they're not ski goggles. I've, Jesus Christ almighty. I saw somebody out there with ski goggles once. I told him, dude, you go back and go get something. I don't have anything. Come with me. I got an extra pair. I'll give them to you. Because the last thing you want to do is see someone get hit with a BB. And not only did the BB go through, but the BB shatters a ski goggle and then you got like plastic shrapnel in your eye, you're going to lose your eye. Uh, the game's not worth it. Airsoft is not worth it. Paintball's not worth it. Um, so there's that. Um, as a, Okay, so what else? So how about collecting gear? Little at a time. I mean, why... I mean, seriously, nobody's out there... If, you, if, if you're making tons of money, you don't have time to play airsoft. You're out making money. I don't have tons of money because I don't, I don't have 
my side job doesn't make enough money to do that. I don't get paid enough playing airsoft to, to do that. So I accumulated my stuff over a span of five, six years, and I'm still using stuff I use when I play paintball. So, you know, accumulate it a little at a time. Um, don't be afraid to mix and match stuff. You don't need to match your kit, but that's me. I know some people, a lot of people like to match and, and the, the, listen to me, if you're out there playing and someone says, Oh, you, you, you got different color. Ignore them. It's nonsense because usually the people that are matching their kit are a, they have full-time jobs and they're only going to like the, like the, the ops anyway, or they're out there and they just want to be that tactical operator and they can't afford it anyway and they're racking up their credit cards don't listen to them it's nonsense it's complete nonsense so there's that um i don't know i'm driving so i can't really see what if anyone's asking any questions i know people are facebook messaging me and whatnot and i'm getting text messages don't fall i'm getting text messages so um i think i'm gonna end it right here I think I already